All right. The reason why um, having a service go down is terrible is because for these larger companies, um, this means thousands of thousands of dollars per second, per minute, and you're looking at upwards of millions of dollars uh, per hour. So some data I got online was um, Amazon AWS in 2012 was around $65,000 per minute for downtime, YouTube 24,000, 2019, and things like that. And this is just downtime. This is including legal fines and, and other penalties. Um, so if you're hosting services for other companies, uh, you might have to pay some of what um, of what they lost simply because you were to, you were the host and then your service went down. So the service that you were providing them because they're paying for twenty four seven went down. There could be some repercussions. Maybe they won't want to sign with you again. Things like that. So it's very important to not have any downtime at all or minimize your downtime as much as possible. And then some examples of services um, that you could look into. We're not gonna go through all of these today, but things like SSH service, DNS service, LDAP, RDP, SQL, TP, HCVS, and Apache. Um, this is just if you wanted to look more into it, these are services that would come in handy for just general use, for RBB, and for CTFs. Keep it there for a second, because I see people typing. All right, LAMP stack. All right, so what is LAMP stack? It's essentially um, a web platform. It's a bunch of applications that we've put together, and they're going to help us create our web platform so it consists of mainly four things. Uh, Alice for Linux, the operating system, Apache, our web server, MySQL, which would be our database management server. And then the P can be Perl, PHP, or Python. Uh, in most cases, it's gonna be PHP. I think that's still the most used um, web, uh, programming language for websites. All right, Linux. Um, I'm pretty sure we're all comfortable with Linux. It's just a free to use open source operating system. It's the main reason we use it. There's big tux. And then going next. All right, Apache. So it's a web server. It's free, it's open source. A lot of the tools we're gonna to be using today are free and open source. So you can download them yourself if you wanted to. Um, if you're not sure what a web server does, its main priority right now is um, it handles any and all network requests and it determines what to send back. So if someone's trying to uh, get something, something from a website, the web server will take that request, determine what it needs, and then um, it'll tell um, all the other apps, hey, this is what we need to gather, this is what we're gonna send out. So that is what our web server does. And in this case, we're using Apache. Next is my SQL database. It's an SQL database, um, again, free and open source. Uh, what databases are, if you haven't used them, is um, they pretty much organize tons and tons of data. Um, depending on how large your organization is, you can have thousands and thousands and even millions of lines of information. The database organizes it, makes it quick to grab and output, uh, things like this. An example of this would be login credentials, but that's not limited. It's um, pretty much any piece of data we give it. All right, next is PHP, Python, Perl. I'm just gonna keep saying PHP for now. This is a, that's what we'll be using. Um, open source, free programming language. Um, it stands for hypertext preprocessor. Pre it used to be um, homepage tools. And essentially the reason we use this, it's the most common uh, language for scripting and building websites. Essentially, every time you see a pretty image or pretty colors on your website webpage, uh, it's probably done through uh, PHP. All right, cool. So next we're gonna go over how this all works together. So the start exists. You, that is you, you have your laptop and you want to get to a website. So the first thing you do is you go to a website and you make a request. I want to see the web page. This gets sent to our LAMP stack server and this is where it's gonna be broken down. Um, Apache re receives the request and so it's gonna handle re the request. And then it's gonna say, okay, this guy wants a web page. Um, it sends it to PHP. PHP runs code to send HTML. 
and then that will be given to my SQL. So once my um, once um, it grabs the data from PHP and my SQL, it'll go back up the stack, uh, and that, it'll actually go back to Apache because Apache might want to add some things as well. Once um, it's gone through the stack, we go to Linux. Pretty much say, tell your operating system, hello, um, the request is ready. We're going to send it out. And then, boom, you send it here as a website. It's the data. So that's how the LAMP stack works. Um, not too complicated. I just want to go over it because not many people actually know how it works. Um, and this is for pretty much everything. Almost every request you get from a website or you give to a website will be done this. Every click you do, this is just continuously ongoing. So that is how our LAMP set works. Um, this isn't the only way to do it. I think there's another one called Mean. Like, me. Mean is like a web framework inside of web framework. It's not necessarily like, or like a web server. So okay, never mind. Stacks. Yeah, there's a lot of full stacks. Yeah, there's a lot of full stacks, but yeah. Yeah, LAMP, LAMP. Yeah, but this is the main one. All right, cool. So, yeah. Next is we're going to do our walkthrough. Today's going to be more of a hands on thing. If there's any questions, though, feel free to ask. Any questions on LAMP stack, web servers, databases? No questions? Cool. Okay, I'm gonna get set up. Did you guys receive your credentials, by the way? You did, sweet. Uh, I'm, uh, one second, we're gonna switch to your laptops. Wait, can you use, wait, can We're gonna get the laptop set up. Sorry, I need to check uh, to see people ask me for credentials. All right, give us one minute and then we'll get started. I see Derek trying to remember what PHP is, so I'm just gonna go back a couple slides. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just share your screen. Oh wait, I'm not joining the Zoom. Are you not in the Zoom? No. So join the Zoom. Hi kids. Hi. Uh, it's unmuted. Yeah, hi. Can hear you. Hey, let's go. Okay, hello everyone. Um, 
quiet down a little bit. It's going to be, this is going to be real cool, guys. Um, so I'll be going over uh, installing a lamp stack or the Ubuntu part. Um, so for, is everyone logged in to your pods? Yeah. All right. Uh, let me know if I need to slow down or, um, or wait a little bit. Uh, the password is CCDC. Okay, so, um, yeah, no problem. Okay, so our Ubuntu is going to be hosting all the web server stuff, and our sent OS um, box will be hosting the database. Um, okay, so to start, we want to open up a terminal. So I'll just go here, like this, and then, um, we're just gonna uh, go into root to make things easier. Uh, so you could do sudo tack i, then type in ccdc for the password, then we're root. Um, let me see, okay. So the first step we're gonna take is to uh, update our system. So we have the most recent packages. So you could do this by apt uh, get update and apt get upgrade. So this should update all of our packages. Um, make sure we're up to date. Uh, this is also a really good tip for RBB. If you have outdated services, this is a good way to uh, kind of baseline your system and have a default security standard for uh, everything that you're doing. Okay, it looks like uh, everything's up to date. Does everyone uh, log in by the way, just to make sure? Yes. No, like I'm, I'm not even Yeah, oh, you're not? Wait, Brian. Yeah. He doesn't look like he's logged in. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I, I got it. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Are you guys following along or? Yeah, good. You did it. Nice, nice. I'm proud of you. <laughs> He's a legend. Um, oh, you heard that you just finished the lamp stack. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, for people on Zoom, we're just going to be waiting for people to get logged in for a little bit. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah. Wait, what command did you just run? Uh, we just ran app get update and upgrade. So let's see it up there. Can you read it or should I make it bigger? Notepad. Yeah, so it's at the very bottom right there. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wait. The... Yeah, the flashlight under. Yeah. All right, is everyone connected now? You guys good? Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah.
All right, so we're back. So the next command we're gonna run is to get all the packages and start uh, the Apache service. Um, so for this, we're gonna run apt get install Apache 2 and then Apache 2 and then dash utils. Um, so this is our web server. Um, uh, yeah, so after we run this, it should start the service as well. Um, we could check it. Uh, does everyone have that command down? All right, cool. So once we run it, it will be prompted. Yes, we want to install. Oh, oh that's kind of... Give me a second, just a little troubleshooting. Oh, whoops. Uh, yeah. Um, can you look up this error? It's just restarting a service. Um, if any of you guys are getting this error, um, I think whatever is resolving DNS, uh, something might be broken. Um, no, it's just, uh, it's just, I just need to restart something. Hold on. No, no, it's it's not, it's not. It's booming, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's this, right? Um, just this. I I've gotten this air before. I thought it was system D. Uh, yeah, there's no internet. Wait, it's the router? Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's okay. Apache 2 utils? Yeah. yeah, it's router. Uh, 
Thanks so much. Fifteen seventy nine. Oh, no, no. Right. Nice. Thank you, Justin. Uh, the legend, the legend. Yeah, I'll check the next part and let's see. Yeah, it might be a uh, yeah. So we the Why? Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, no, you're good, you're good. What's up? Is there a portrait of my Generally, it might be it. It because it's swapping land and land. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, only that stuff is too Okay. Um, so while we're fixing that, I have a booklet. So we're going to do that while we wait and fix this. One second. I'm going to get the booklet ready.
Interesting. Wait, is it paused? Why is it only? My bad, I'm actually having a huge Zoom boomer moment. I was sharing the wrong screen console. The blue kit from the Zoom. There we go. Okay, yeah, we're fixing that networking issue real quick. But while we wait, we have the blue clip. So, yeah. By the way, this booklet will have things from some stuff from today and a lot of stuff from um, Hacktober. So everything's going to be useful for everybody. Okay, I'm going to start the booklet in two minutes. Oh, well, you guys are saying that Dr. Pike says hi to everybody.
I'm going to start. Some are very easy, some are difficult.
Okay, congratulations, Kofni. And also, um, the issue has a solution. We're going through and fixing most of them. Um, real quick, um, who doesn't have internet connection? You can just test internet connection by doing like a ping, ping 8.8.8.8. If it says like no connection, that means yours is broken. Just put in Zoom chat your, uh, your number, like your pod number, and I can go in and manually fix it. It'll just take me about 30 seconds for each one. Yeah. Is someone going to steal candy from me? Don't uh, DM ping. Um, anyone, just put it in everyone chat, like your pod number if it's not working. All right, cool. Okay, let me, uh, let me put my thing in the chat. Here, what? Bang in the chat. What are you talking about? What? Sussy Baka? Well, that's better. Wait, just the chat, right? Like, 542. What's, yeah, what's your OP dot? Uh, N -E -E -U -W -U -S. That's me. Oh, that's you. Oh my god, one more LP until it's gold. Oh. I used to queue one trick, and now I'm queuing the most. Yeah, we're quickly fixing the ones that aren't working. Um, and if you don't know which yeah, pod number is, it's just a yeah, whole or web console. Is, is so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like four of us going through all of them. All of them. So yeah. One second. Wait, Jimmy. You still going to go out to you? You want me to look for other people too? Wow. Oh my god, dude. The dust blade. Kenneth is willing to go with us. So crazy. Kenneth is willing to come with us. That's a lot of elbows. Yeah, huh? Wait, guys want to like grab the person? Wait, you guys want to grab food? You want to like have a cuddling session first? No. Summons. Gym. Oh yeah, we're going to the gym, right? I haven't worked out in ever, oh, and uh, I'm not going to start now. You know your mic Wait, is really? hot. You never worked out. Never worked out. Does that even mean? Like, sounds like an excuse. Okay. Like, you don't even like walk. Exactly. It's, an, it's, a, it's a really good excuse, too. Imagine yeah, if you're like okay. small. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me see. Here, come on. Come here, come here. Squish, 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 squish. 1534. Oh, my God, dude. Unlimited potential right there. Limited potential. It's like day two. It's the worst day, honestly. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Good message. 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 We can. We can make it real. We can. Yeah, play a lot of Belvis. Belvis. Yeah, Belvis. Bel 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 yeah. At the end of every game, I should I type slash all sperm down. <laughs> also, also when I'm playing Velvet, my duo is like playing Yumi. This guy's like this guy's like silver or something. Oh, I mean, oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Not having the Yumi passive is like so bad. Plus he's on like, Instagram all the time. Is it diarrhea? No, no. Okay. That's a random guy. Diarrhea. <laughs> Interesting. It's a related. Oh my god! Oh, this dude. 
Oh, oh. gold four zero LP. Let's go, dude. Oh, you those guys. Those guys. I'm at zero LP. What are you looking at? What should I look at? Yes, that's the real question. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we'll be resuming the workshop again. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, we had some, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some networking issues. Uh, should be fixed now. Uh, if it's not for you, just type your pod number in the Zoom, and Brian will fix it for you. Um, so moving on from Apache and Apache Two Utils, we have. Uh, let's see. So to see if Apache is running, we have our system CTL command. So system CTL status Apache two. So, okay, that's, oh yeah. I think I didn't install it actually. So if you miss this part, apt get install Apache two, Apache two utils. Uh, so this will take a little bit. Looks like it's working now. All right, so to verify that it's up and running, we have system CTL status Apache 2. Um, so we could see that it's active and running, and then we could see the time it started. Um, pretty valuable information, especially if you're in an RVB. Um, if your services are down, you could see more information on why it's down and when it, um, when it got taken down as well. Um, really useful command. Uh, you could also restart services by going system CTL restart Apache 2. And then if it's down, it'll restart and it'll bring it back up if there's no configure uh, configuration files that are um, changed or stuff like that. Um, so next, we could ver we could also verify if our uh, web server is running by going to localhost, which is us. Um, so this is the default landing page for um, Apache Two. Um, yeah, not much here. This is just to verify that it's working. Um, let's see. Okay, next is the database stuff. Where's Brian? Can I come up? Yeah, so um, the database stuff is gonna be on the CentOS machine. Uh, the credentials are Swift. 
and Swift. Okay. Um, what's that? Yeah, yeah, it's up right now. All right, Bryant will be taken over for the CentOS box. Yeah. Okay, cool. So first things first, we need to install the uh, SQL client. So we're gonna do sudo, whoops, sorry, different keyboard. Sudo app-get install my SQL-client, my SQL-server. I'll keep it up here for a second so you guys can see it. Um, unfortunately, I can't make it bigger. Is that fine for everyone? It's probably not. If you guys can't see, uh, all these steps are in the study guide. So just go to the link tree and you'll be able to find it. Yeah. If you didn't hear that in Zoom, um, if it's too small on your monitors, um, the study guide has all the steps. And then the study guide is on our link tree and I'll just plug the link tree real quick. Oh, it's, oh, also we're supposed to be using, yeah, my bad. Yeah. Is this? Okay, cool. So we're supposed to be using yum. So instead of sudo app get, it's just sudo yum. Different packet managers. All right, cool. I'm going to press enter. Password is Swift. Yeah, sorry. We're supposed to be using yum. Um, Oh, wait. Yeah, let me do yum update. Sorry, I need to check something. Oh, wait. Oh, so yeah. So I'm just doing some fixing real quick. Yeah. True. Sorry, one second. Um, I just, I just, no, we already did the H client. Okay. It might be the DH client. We did it earlier, though, before we found. This is the password. Wait, so it didn't work? Oh, it's loading your speed. Okay. I hope so because we haven't tried DNS. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you try to do the yum um, install and it didn't work, um, we have to do a quick change and that's actually a command that you guys can do yourself. Let me just open up Notepad. One second, I'm ready. I'm ready down in the notepad so that way you guys can. All right, cool. I'm going to reshare my screen real quick so I can show you the command that we wanted to use. Um, new share screen. Okay. 
Taylor is using my box. Um, if you're in the air for yum, like where it says like nothing to do or there's no command not found, uh, run sudo dash i and then do dh client. So sudo dash i makes you root. Each client uh, should fix our interface. Also, oh, yeah, Taylor put it there for us. And I'll put the commands in. Um, After that, try pinging 8.8.8.8. Oh, it's. Oh, I did an L. My bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try pinging After that, if you can ping 8.8.8.8.8 or ping google.com, you should be good. Essentially, the networking's fixed. We just need to fix the interface by restarting it. And DH client is how we will do that. Is anyone having any trouble? We're just fixing a couple last ones and then we're solid and then we'll continue. Okay, I'm gonna start again. Everyone should be fixed. If not, uh, just raise your hand, call someone out, and then we'll help you get it fixed right away. All right, cool. So I did my DH client. I just want to make sure I have uh, internet connection. Let me minimize this. Huh? Oh. Can you go over installing it again? Yeah, I will. I don't know whose box I'm on, by the way. <laughs> Wait, give me one second. I am sorry, so I've been using your pod. <laughs> okay. Um,
Okay, cool. I'm back on my pod. Swift. Swift. Log in. Uh, let me make sure I have connection. I do not. Okay, so sudo dash i swift. Okay, I think we're good now. Let me try one last time. Should I just sound rude? Okay, sweet. All right, cool. So I'm going to go over the install command again. Uh, on the guy that says app dash get, that's a mistake. Sorry. It should be a uh, yum because we're using uh, CentOS. So it's a different package manager. Cool. So sudo yum install mysql dash client space mysql dash server. Here it is. I'll go ahead and press enter. Yeah. This one will take a second, by the way. Essentially, it's just installing uh, both client and server. If you get this thing, you might have to show you yum update. Okay, MySQL is giving you trouble, so I'm gonna try MariahDB. Uh, so remember how there was MySQL and also MariahDB as another option. We're gonna do MariahDB real quick, see if that works. Yeah, the M and lamp is also interchangeable from Maria, Mariah, DB. Uh, Try this again. I didn't hit install. That's my bad. Do we?
Okay, so CentOS seems to be um, have a lot of trouble, so we might just do this on Ubuntu. Let's try one last thing, trying out our mirrors. Yeah, I'm gonna cancel this. Having some problem issues. So we're gonna do it on Ubuntu. Um, if you want to go ahead with the challenge and try to troubleshoot your way through CentOS, then go ahead. But what we're going to do is just do everything on Ubuntu. So um, hopefully that's good with everyone. Yeah. Okay, so if you didn't hear Taylor on Zoom, essentially um, CentOS is giving us so much trouble. We're gonna go ahead and actually install this on Ubuntu instead. I keep using the wrong mouse. So let me open my Ubuntu pod. Password CCDC. Oh, wow. I'm going to clear this out. Okay, cool. So we still need MySQL. Let's do MySQL like we initially planned. In this case, we actually are using sudo apt get. So sudo apt get install MySQL client, MySQL server. This is our database manager. I'm gonna click enter. We want to continue. Yes. All right. So, what's the password for the MySQL root user? Um, I'm just gonna keep it as Swift. Not the best password, but uh, just for quick. Repeat password. It's going to keep installing everything. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'll give it a second, but um, essentially it installed for me. Here's the command again if you need it. I'll keep it there for a few seconds before I move on. Cool. All right, so now our database server is installed. Um, now that it's installed though, it's um, really, really advised that we run a security script that's going to um, remove default settings. A lot of these default settings are very insecure. Um, so running the script is actually gonna do a lot to um, protect your database system. So I'm gonna hit clear and then run that command, which is sudo my SQL dash secure installation. You will need your password from the SQL thing, so hopefully you remember it. This is gonna ask you if um, you want to do the password plugin, go ahead and click yes, or type in yes. And then there's different levels of password validation policies. Um, this all depends on you. Um, just for the sake of this example, we're just going to do um, one for medium. But you should probably be doing two. So yeah. 
Low just means um, minimum length of eight. Medium means minimum length of eight. Numeric, mixed case, and special characters. And then strong wants uh, dictionary words. So instead of using um, random numbers of characters that mean something to you, this will be using uh, dictionary characters. I'll say in most cases, medium is um, very, pretty good. Strong is insane. All right, I'm going to go one. In this case, it's asking if we want to change the password for root because it's pretty much saying, hey, the strength of your root password isn't that strong. Um, normally, I'll click yes and change it, but just for speed, I'm just going to click no. All right, cool. And then for remaining questions, I'm just going to type in um, yes. So remove anon anonymous users, yes. This allow root login remotely. So honestly, no one should be able to log into root uh, remotely. That's a huge flaw. So we're gonna get rid of that. Remove test database and access to it. Go ahead and click yes. Reload privilege tables, yes. And we're done. So that was the security script to just get rid of default settings, update them and make our database a lot more secure. All right, next is installing PHP in Ubuntu. What? Create the user? Oh, yeah. We're going to actually create a user. So we actually skip down and create a user for our database. So I'm going to clear. All right, cool. So we have our database and um, if we want to create a user, it'd be sudo mysql dash u for user root dash p. Yeah. So I'm gonna click enter, ask for our password. All right, cool. So now uh, that we've done this, we are we are in uh, MySQL. You can tell by our change in the shell. And we're gonna type the following commands. So create database WP underscore blog, my blog. So we just created our database called my blog. Now we're gonna do create user to create a user. And it'll be username at percent. And then at the end of this, we have to do identified, identified. It's a by, right? Yeah. And then password. I'm going to click enter. Okay, cool. So I tried to create a user with using, well, well, use your username, but um, it didn't like my password. Uh, I have to actually run this command again. Create user. So this is to create a user. Username is the username that we're creating. Like username is their username. Identified by, and then their password we will change. So I'm just gonna do something pretty strong, a strong version of password. This should be strong enough. Cool. So yeah, that's in command to create user. It's just create user. The username I used was username. And then it was identified by the password and the password we had to type in ourselves. So we created someone with the username, username and the password, uh, this funky version of password. So next we have to do grant all on 
So we're granting every account on our blog. Username. I'm gonna type it out and I'll explain what it means. Sorry. Cool. So grants all is a permission type. And then we're giving um, the, that permission type on the blog to our username, username. So the account name username now has uh, permissions on uh, the blog name. So that would be my blog is name of the blog, username is the username, the username and then grant all is permission. We're gonna press enter. Password is not satisfied current password policy requirements. So let me double check this. Why have you seen this? Sorry, one second. I'm gonna try uh, including the password. Sorry about that. Oh. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to be identified by password. That's weird because uh, usually it doesn't require that. It might be a version difference. Pain. It's an Ubuntu 16 news. Okay. I accidentally got Mariah DB set up to All right, so. Um... Okay, so the next com command we're going to do is just flush privileges. Like this. Um, what? Oh. All right. So flush privileges. Uh, this will apply all of our changes, and then we could just exit out. Uh, everyone, everyone got that? Cool. All right. So. Going back to setting up our website, um, we're gonna download the PHP packages we need. So we need to do apt get install uh, PHP lib Apache 2 mod PHP. And then also we have PHP MySQL. Uh, um, mod has a dash in between. Yeah. Again, they can't see because it's the bottom. Oh, row. okay, okay. Um, oh, that's kind of crazy. It's gone. <laughs> uh, I'll just let it install and then I'll show you guys the command after. Um, let me see if I could type it in chat. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so all these packages basically make sure PHP works with Apache 2 and also with our MySQL database. Um, yeah, this may take a little bit. All right, so, um, so this was our command to everyone in person. Uh, so just download PHP with these packages. Uh, I'll wait a little bit for you guys to finish. Okay, is everyone done with that? Not yet. All right. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, do exit and then semicolon. All right, how's everyone doing on this? Good? Good? All right, so moving on, uh, to verify that our PHP extensions are applied, we could just restart the Apache 2 service. So system CTL restart Apache 2. So, yeah, so just restart Apache 2. Um, yeah, and then we could also check that our PHP is working by putting a info file in our var dub 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 um, HTML directory. So if we change to that directory, so so just cd into this directory. Uh, this, this directory is where all the web content is stored. Um, so we'll be able to access it from the URL. And then we could make this info.php file. So just do nano info.php um, in, the, in the web content directory. Uh, so to make this output the PHP info, we could type this little script. Um, so it should look something like that. Uh, so we're basically making a file that outputs the in, uh, information for our PHP uh, language that we're using for this website. So this is just to verify that PHP is running. Uh, usually you don't have to do this, but just as an extra precaution, we could do this. So we could save the file. Yes. And then to access this file, we just go back to our web page and type info.php. So this will load up our script that we, um, that we made the 
info PHP filing. And as you can see, it outputs the version number and all this random PHP stuff. Um, and it also shows that we're running Apache 2. Uh, a lot of useful information. Um, yeah, that's about it for PHP. Uh, is, is everyone there? Are we having any problems or how are we doing? <laughs> Um, all right, cool. So now we could download WordPress. So WordPress is going to be what's going to, what's running on the site, basically. Uh, so I'm going to install it in my root directory. Um, so the command is wget taxi http wordpress.org. Um, all right, so this is the command. We're basically pulling the file from this website. So, oh, twice. Oh, oh. Huh? No, just kidding. On Zoom. Oh, on Zoom? Wait, what do you mean by that? Hey, nice, nice. Yeah. That's what we want, right? Yeah. Wait, what was it? Alt twice? Alt twice on the keyboard. On the oh, 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 I'm stupid. All right. All right, nice, nice, nice. Uh, okay, so basically wget is grabbing the file for us. Um, it's the same as if you just type in the URL, um, the website or this site automatically downloads it. So wget is able to just pull it from uh, whichever website we want. In this case, it's um, the WordPress website. Uh, I'll type it again. Okay. Um, uh oh. Nice, nice. Uh, so to verify you downloaded it, there's a progress bar. If it says 100%, you know you got it. Um, so we just downloaded a tar file, which is like a zip file, and we need to extract the contents. So to do this, we have the command tar tac xzvf, and then the file we want to untar. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Derek. So, okay, so this is the command. It's basically gonna just unpackage everything that we have in our uh, WordPress tar file. All right, so once you run that, it should output all this stuff. Uh, all right, so if we list out the contents, we now have this new WordPress directory that has all the WordPress contents. So um, to, get this on the website, we have to move the WordPress contents to the var www.html directory. So to do, this, to do this, we have the move command. So then move WordPress and then the star. Uh, the star basically just means everything in the directory. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we have var www.html. So once you run that command, all the WordPress uh, files and directories are going to be moved into our web server, um, uh, like file structure. So if to verify it worked, we could just go in here, ls, and then now we could see we have all this WordPress stuff like configuration files, uh, the readme, stuff like that. Uh, Huh? Good. All right, is everyone at this at this point? Yeah. 
Yeah, so HTML is all the directory content. So, or the website content, I mean. So that's why we're in HTML. Um, so the next step is to change the file permissions or the directory permissions for HTML. Uh, I believe when we had downloaded the Apache 2 packages, uh, we created the user www.data. And this is basically a service account that deals with all website things and um, basically ma manages it all for us. So um, to do this, we do chown, which is basically chown. It changes the owner of directories or files. So we do tech r to recurse down the directory. And then we have the service user. Uh, and then the directory we want to change. So this is what the command should look like. Um, it's basically so uh, it could manage our web server. Um, so if we type enter, then we could verify this by doing an ls command. And then we see that www.data is the uh, owner and also the group uh, of, this, of this directory. Um, so that should be it for, yeah, so, okay. So then we need to, in order for, um, let me see. So for our web page to, or our web server to automatically route us to our WordPress download, we need to delete that index.html file. So this file uh, by default loads when we just go to our local host. So if you do the remove command and then the index.html, um, so we'll get rid of that. So it defaults to our WordPress installation. Um, also, since we're running WordPress on the same machine uh, that we have our database on, we need to modify the WordPress configuration file. Um, as you might see, there's no configuration file right now. So we could move the um, WordPress sample uh, configuration file to WordPress config, which is what um, our system is going to look for for these credentials and um, where the database is. So sample or config sample to config PHP. Um, so once you do that, uh, yeah, we see that we have the WordPress config.php here. And this is going to have the template that's auto generated once we. Um, downloaded WordPress. Uh, so if we nano it, then we see all these settings. Uh, we don't need to worry about this top stuff. Um, so if you remember from our database, we had to put a user and a password um, and also define the name of the database. So this is where you put all those that information. Um, I don't really remember what the stuff was. <laughs> My blog like this? Yeah. OK, username, username. Yeah. I. Um, All right, so put uh, whatever you put into your database into this section. Uh, this is so our WordPress site could access the database. Uh, like this? Uh, W0. OK. Um, and also, if we have the database running on a different system, like we initially planned, uh, you would define the database host down here. Uh, right now, we have it as local host because it's running on the same machine that our WordPress site is running as. So if we save that, um, yes, modified, and then. Uh, then we just need to restart Apache 2 and MySQL so our changes will be applied. So system CTL restart MySQL and then system CTL restart Apache 2. So after this, we should have our site up and running. Um, 
All right, so we'll be redirected to the installation page for WordPress. And we could just hit continue for English, site title. This could be anything you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So if I do test, test, password, whatever, email. Doesn't have to be your real email. Uh, just this format, because it checks for kind of real emails. And then if we click install WordPress, should install. And then we could go log in and then log into our WordPress site. And now we have our LAMP stack done. So good job, guys. Whoops. Nah, nah, not today. <laughs> Uh, so, so this is how you add a post title. Day two, day two. No. Day two, oh. <laughs> day two. <laughs> All right, so this is our post. We could publish it and then publish it. Publish. And we see that this is our post. Yes, very good, very nice. <laughs> Speed run. Speed run. Speed run. All right. Uh, to everyone still here, this concludes the workshop, but I will speed run the lamp stack. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In Info.php. Wait, Jimmy, I'll find it. I'll find it. Jimmy, come on. Uh, yeah, Jimmy, I want to Okay, ready? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I gotta set up everything. Wait, hold on. Okay, Wait, wait, wait. Give me a second. This might take a little bit. One second is passed. Thanks. Uh, is anyone using this or? Okay. All right. This is just the pre stuff. Don't don't worry. I'm not cheating. No, no, nah, nah, hell. No. What if this became a new piece of work? Like, speed run the app. Let's do this. Let me open a team up section. No, no, wait, wait. Give me, give me a second. Give me a second. Ooh. Okay, you ready? No, wait, hold on. You have to start it from a blank terminal. Oh, a blank terminal? Okay. Yeah, so start from a blank terminal. Yes. All right, all right. You guys ready? All right, ready? Okay, three, two, one, go. Uh, shit. This is this is a package skip real quick. Um, thank you, thank you. Oh no. Yeah. 